This is Radar, Father and our table of coming at you with another edition of Movie Reviews Observation number 217. So overall this week, I did get to watch at least six movies, so pretty close to the usual seven. I will say this, not the greatest week. First movie I watched was Wonka with Timothy Chalamet, uh, Keegan-Michael Key, Matt Lucas, Sally Hawkins, Rowan Atkinson, Olivia Coleman, and Hugh Grant. So you know what? High quality cast. Lots of lots of cool special effects on the screen. Very beautiful and colorful representation of the movie. It was a well diverse movie, which doesn't fictionally, I know it's fiction, but not accurately historically. The time period of this was in a, this was in, this movie supposed to be in the past, like way before the other two Wonka movies were ever created in terms of the time period. So like the three chocolate owners, one being black and also being in charge of. Everything doesn't seem that realistic that a black person is owning a, bu a business that is a tycoon in the industry that many years ago. So, yes, and the, obviously the main, other main character was a was a black woman who's a girl who's a orphan. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying it's not factually. Two, there was only one se sense of oompa loompa, and that was Hugh Grant. So instead of a little person, um. Little people, you know, playing the Oompa Loompas. They just kind of figured out some sort of green screen magic to put his head on a little Oompa Loompa. That is interesting. Trust me, there's a lot of singing and dancing and all this effort into the movie. And it was, an, they, and I feel like they spent too much money on the actors and all the special effects and all the music to be like, we're going to make a good enough plot. The plot is just like, man, my mother used to make me chocolate and I want to be, and I would want to be a magician. I want to, then I decided to become the world's greatest candy maker and he's trying to be a candy maker and it doesn't work out. Then he gets screwed and then he's in this indentured slavery with all different walks of life and people, men, women, different ages, what they do per profession, one's a comedian, whatever, and they figure out a plan to try to help Willie get to be famous and stuff. And they're planning on making a franchise out of it. And it was an interesting enough movie. The funniest thing, Mr. Bean playing like the, they're like, they got chocolate ninjas and chocolate priests who are like getting paid by the owners to forgive their sins and paying the police officers like Keegan-Michael Key to look the other way as they shun other businesses away. And only the three people, these two white guys and this black guy are now in charge. It's almost an hour and 50 minutes with credits. It's an okay movie. I had, it was fun to watch and it was and joyful for like I think children under a certain age are gonna really like it as an adult you're cynical like myself on a lot of stuff like you can't really replicate the first one with Gene Wilder that's a classic I liked the Johnny Depp one when I was younger when it first came out with Freddie Highmore but as I got an older and I rewatched it I was like eh, I don't know if it's as, that great so this one's okay it's an interesting idea to be a prequel and then try to make a whole entire franchise out of it with a young hip actor like Timothy Chalamet but it was okay then I saw the movie Waitress the Musical, starring Sarah Varela. And like other musicals that they decided to make specifically into a movie like Dear Evan Hansen, I'm trying to remember what else, but the, the, the most recent one that I watched was Dear Evan Hansen, where it actually takes place in other places, and there's scenes everywhere. There are more people, blah, 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 blah. It's like a well put out thing. This thing, I just may have misread it, or they misadvertised it, where they just filmed Sarah Varela. The, the, the famous singer and songwriter and keyboard pl and piano player and all these people just being on stage doing it and then changing it and it's like oh and it's like wow you're gonna sit here for more than two hours to watch a musical when you can go do bro you can go to the theater and watch it instead so yeah not that great and then I watched the movie migration made by DreamWorks and it was really funny where Kumail Lajani plays a neurotic duck the male duck who doesn't like to migrate and he always stays. And he's got, you know, he's got children who both have different personalities, married to Elizabeth Banks, she's an outgoing duck. And the kids kind of pressure him into finally migrating. His old uncle is Danny DeVito. Aquafina voices a pigeon. Uh, again, King Michael Key didn't do this on purpose. He voiced a Jamaican parakeet or macaw, whatever it was. And yeah, the whole movie is the kids convince him to go to migrate and obviously things happen and they have to go through a lot of trials and tribulation and adventures together where you're not sure if they're going to make it out or whatever they got to deal with animals they got to deal with humans and it's like a nice venture that they go on this family of ducks to go to migrate and stuff and barely an hour and 20 minutes that's with credits because you know with animated movies the credit scenes are very long because of how much effort it takes to make animation 
And I thought, you know, Camila Johnny was perfect as this duck. Elizabeth Ank was pretty good. And obviously Aquafina playing a New York pigeon makes sense. It's just her voice. Like that's every single voice acting scene she's done. You know, Little Mermaid, that dragon movie. It's just her voice. And Dan DeVito playing a, a weird old uncle is pretty good at this point in life. And Kiko Michael Key has become a very well diverse voice actor because they gave him a Jamaican dialect coach. So at least he's doing it correctly. And I personally think this was the best movie I watched this week because it's a kid's movie. It's fun for everyone. It's super appropriate for anyone. Like, you'll laugh. You'll make the jokes. And, yeah, you should definitely watch it with your kids. Then I watched this movie called Skin a Marink. thought it was Skin Mark, but Skin a Marink. It looks like that. So the movie is is 100 minutes with credit. It says two children wake up in the middle of the night and find their father missing and all the windows and doors in the house have been vanished. They call it a one-of-kind film that recreates the sensation of being very young and essentially powerless and able to ever articulate why everything feels so wrong. That's not it. The movie was, they filmed this in, in the dark, so he had like the, the night vision on the camera. And they say walls and windows are gone, but I saw walls, windows, and doors. And then you just hear people whispering and talking. And it's just a hodgepodge of just complete darkness and, and noises. I don't understand. I don't understand it. I don't get it. It wasn't like it's a horror film that was kind of creepy, disgusting, or weird, or made no sense. This movie just was a movie that made absolutely no sense. And there was no point in making it. I don't understand why this was made it's just why then i watched children of the corn and apparently it's a remake it's from the the franchise of like what corn people or whatever and obviously the plot is some like gas kills a bunch of little kids and then this one girl survived gets adopted and then eventually the corn has a creature and is talking to her and they uh try to kill all the parents and prison them and the teenage girls are like the teenagers are like we got to stop this and it's barely 90 minutes which was good and of course like Either everyone's going to die or no one's going to die or like someone survived. And obviously you think that the main character survived, but it kind of looks like they're trying to make a sequel because it's like either you can't kill anything in the corner. Nothing ever dies in the corner. The, the girl doesn't die or something. It was like, okay, cool. Thanks for being a terrible horror film. Then I watched Case Bot Wars Last Centennial, which again is an hour 50 something minutes with credits. So it's like an hour 47 minutes of real time. And it's one of those, oh, it's in the future where there's two continents that are fighting each other for resources and stuff, and they're not sure if it's reinforcements or the bad guys coming. You got like a curmudgeon old guy in charge who doesn't want to change stuff. You got Case Bot where he's sleeping with the guy because, you know, that, that and, the, and the guy has his position. And then there's like another guy who's like a moron who's also the thing, and they're all like getting upset and they want to get a mutiny because they want to get off this boat because they found another boat. And then people die... And I don't know if they blow up the machine or not, the the you know the the base or not, or if they get out or or they get out alive or something. It was just pretty darn boring and slow and stupid. So I think the best movie that I watched this week was Migration because it was an enjoyable kids movie, and DreamWorks seems to make some good kids movies. And Wonka was playful enough, even though it wasn't the best script that I've ever watched. They're setting up for a future franchise, and I enjoyed it. I just didn't say it was the best movie. Okay. Get him a ring should never been made. I don't know what it is. Children of the Corn was just stupid. Last Centennial was not great. And next time, if you're gonna put the waitress the musical on DVD, make it a movie. Don't just record of a recording because that's just stupid. Thank you again for listening to another edition of Movie Routes Base Number Two Seventeen for On the Radar Table Log. I'm Radar. See you guys next time.